Well, welcome back. So the missus brought this home to, to, to today, and, and, and she said it was uh, tripping from a microwave at work. One device plugged into it, at a, only one thing running through it at a time. She says she said something in the electrical in the deli because it only happens there, or or it's maybe this. Really wants to find out. So, so of course, who to, who to bring it to? She brought it to me. So now the the first thing off the bat I'm going to recognize is we're not. You all list it, although this doesn't say search protector. This actually says relocatable power tap. Relocatable power tap just basically kind of tells me it's it's a fancy extension cord with a switch. These switches do have a reset. It does say reset on there, but they, they're, they're for more of a thermal reset. They're not for surge. Now, if they take a surge, they, they tend to go bad and, and they feel different once that happens, it'll never feel the same afterwards. This has that feeling to it. The cord itself it is an SJ cable. It's 300 volts. It, it, I looked it up. Uh, it's actually rated for 18 amps. It, it's a nice SJ cable. It's standard PVC kind of, these are very, very common cords for, for heavy uh, current applications, heavy amperage applications, uh, such as uh, heavy duty extension cords, uh, power supplies, computer power supply especially, stuff like that. This unit says it's rated for 15 amps, 125 volts AC, not too far off. So basically the cord is rated higher than what they claim this to be. My rule of thumb is usually 80%. You know, if you want something to carry 8 amps, then use a cable that's rated for 10. 80% is where where I, I, I like to stay on the safe side. Give yourself that the little extra overhead. So, so that's the way I look at it. So we're going to run some tests here. My first question was, how many, how, how, what's the wattage of the microwave? She, she's not sure. Now, the, the, the standard average microwaves are usually in the U.S. between, on the cheaper side, small microwaves, 800 watts. Regular size, cheaper microwaves. 1200 watts, uh, fancier kitchen microwaves, 1600 watts, and then, then industrial microwaves, cooking uh, kitchens, what have you, you can go up to, to 2000 watt microwaves easily. So this will do up to 1800 watts. The question is, what's causing it to trip? So I was trying to think, well, what can we do to put a big enough load on here to test this? And then, how are we gonna measure it? Well, the, the, the cheap and easy way is a watt meter like this. That, that's our cheap, easy way of measuring. Done. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to use the flare. Got my flare one ready to go. Now, now, now we need to draw somewhere about where I expect the microwave to be drawing. Every once in a while, you, you go to Walmart and you get lucky. Here's this Hitachi lithium battery. Five dollars. Can't go wrong. Uh, the, the, then you have ones like this Bosch also only paid five dollars for it. Well, we ran across one day this for for five dollars. This is a fifteen hundred watt electric heater. Set this up, and because it has low, medium, and high, I expect to be able to to pull about three different settings of wattage out of this, uh, three different power levels, and. We'll set the thermostat to max. We'll blow the heat away from this because I don't want to affect the, this. I just want to see the temperature that this switch is reaching at. Since this is not a surge protector, it didn't say surge protector. It said power power strip, power port relocator. So, so my hunch is this is just a thermal switch and that's all it is. On, on fan only. Fifteen and a half watts. Okay, so so on low heat, six hundred fifteen watts. Medium, nine hundred and twenty, and on high, fourteen sixty two. So so we got fourteen sixty two. I'll start recording a video here on my flare. Now you can see already, we definitely have some uh, the cord warming up. It seemed like I 
pretty chintzy cord for for an electric heater. I don't know if I would run that. The, the, the outlet definitely heating up. But also, at the very top, the, the, there's that switch. And that switch is, is the warmest part of this whole entire power strip here. So, so we're one minute in. Still running 14, 1,445 watts. And the switch says it's getting up to about 70, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just going to check my calibration on this real fast. <clears throat> so 70 degrees, yep, 70 degrees. This is 70 degrees and, and slowly climbing. Now for this to be a, a surge protector, it, it needs to have something to actually stop surges, to, to, to clamp down transients, to detect over voltages, not just temperatures. There's, there's a huge misconception where a lot of these power strips are just nothing but fancy extension cords, really, with multiple outlets and, 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 and a... Uh, yeah, multiple outlets and a switch on it. Although they do tend to throw a, a thermal switch in there sometimes. Oh my fan. How, how hot are we getting inside of there? 180. So even that hot spot inside there. I wonder what's inside there at the first beginning of that copper strip. On that first outlet, why that why that's reaching 85? If that's 85, that means this is up to up. Oh, that, that that switch is hitting about 90 now. But we did the math. It, it's rated for for another 400. Then I'm pull, pulling through this strip. We are hitting 90, 91, 92. Is that one spot there that's got me concerned? It shouldn't be that hot there. So we're about 96, 97 I saw there. Oh, I saw a flip to 100. And my wattage is going down. Oh, and there it tripped. So there's one hot spot in here. It's reaching 107, 109, 110. It's like all of a sudden it just shot up in this one little spot right up here. It seems to be hitting 110. Yep. So, so I think we found our answer. Now that took 11 minutes. The last time I did this, the, the, this stuff was at room temperature upstairs before I, I left it in the basement to cool off. Uh, and unfortunately, the last time I did it, it, it did it within four minutes, not 11 minutes. I didn't expect this one to take so long. But that does prove the, the, the concept that even though this is rated, for, for this strip is rated for 1800 watts. Apparently we have something going on here. Let me see if I hit the reset. Yep, comes back on. E even only 0.1450 and being rated for 1800, it's tripping earlier than it should be. The big question comes to be, is this really a surge protector? It is should act like a surge protector. It has the word reset on the switch, so you think it's a surge protector, but, but it's the way they word it. There's nowhere that it says it has no joules rating, is relocatable power strip. It's all in the wording. Relocatable power strip. In the past when I've taken these apart, we've seen things, basic copper strips that run your, your ground, your neutral, and your hot. From, from one central point location, your hot is the one thing that switches off. Let's take a close look on an actual surge protector. Here, here's an older General Electric Surge Pro. A resettable fuse on the back switch here. In the back though, it, it does tell you 15 amps, 125 volts, 60 hertz, rated for, for 1875 watts, clamps to 600 volts. Clamps is the main word. You all list it.
the MOVs, metal oxide resistors. And so if I open this up, I shall see something in there that looks similar to this. Possibly blue, possibly red, different sizes, different characteristics, different thicknesses. If you've seen Joe Smith's channel, you've seen him blow these up. You've seen things like this in different sizes, smaller and multimeters. Sometimes you have multiple mobs. And when we open this one, all we have is, that's it. Three copper strips. You're hot, you're ground, you're neutral. Your hot is your breaking point here on the switch. So it turns on and off, which is your black wire. Your ground is your green, your white is your neutral. Neutral just seems to, to, to solder on and jump over. So the, the, the hot points that I, I was seeing here on, on the flare, I was mentioning that this point seemed to be getting a little hotter right here. What that actually was, what, what was the solder point of the hot, to the, the, the hot copper strip. That's all that was. That's why that was looking like it was getting a little hotter. Because when you look at these, these are really, really simple. For the fact that this is all one strip right here. Every outlet, every hot on that outlet is carried by one copper strip. Same with the ground. Same with the neutral. It's one copper strip that everything plugs into. Nothing special on the outlet side of things here. Most of them that look to be this size and shape are that way, except, again, well, we have no clamping down protection, we have no mobs, we have, we have nothing. Now, I, I would take this further apart to see what this uh, switch is rated for, if it is a thermal switch or if it's just tripping out, except this has to go back to, to work with her. So, so unfortunately, this isn't mine to tear down all the way. Sometimes with a flash you can get certain lettering to stand out differently. 15 amp, 125 volt AC, or, or, or sorry, 50 DC, 50 volt DC or 125 volt AC. It's just, just your standard RHS, rated certified, nothing, nothing special in here. It really isn't. You go to the store you, and, and you want a surge protector because you want to you want to protect that 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 new television you just got for Christmas, or or that that new expensive uh, surround sound system or whatever it is, you know. So so you, you're sitting there and you're looking at all of them and they all look the same and you're like, well, here's the five dollar one, and then here's another one. It looks exactly like this. It says reset off on. It looks and they, they look identical. So so. Why would I spend twenty dollars on that one, or twenty-five, or thirty on that one when the five-dollar one, one, two, three, four, five, six—they all have six outlets. I I'm gonna get the five-dollar one. That'll work. No, it may actually not work. And when your house gets hit and that surge does come through, and it doesn't travel all completely off of the mains to the ground fast enough because of how fast that, that, that transient surge is from a lightning strike or something, guess what? Well, whatever you bought that $5 thing to protect your expensive equipment with, it just, it just fried, it just blew up. And it didn't give you any protection at all because it wasn't actually a surge protector. That's my little tip video for, for the day. With the holidays coming up, there's going to be a lot of people getting a, a bunch of new expensive stuff or, or toys or, or things they've always wanted. Maybe if you're watching my channel, maybe you're getting that, 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 that new, new oscilloscope, that new power supply, uh, the higher bandwidth oscilloscope, uh, new DC load, whatever the case is. It's just expensive equipment. Just, just don't, don't trust it. It's just cheaper little surge protectors now, now even on my videos i know some of you are sitting hey i have seen your lab you're sitting there saying i've seen your lab and i've also seen a cheap power strip well you're you're right this is the same kind of reset button nothing special and that's all it is is a power strip though 
Well, what you don't see is this power strip is actually plugged in to a, a UPC 1500 VA battery backup system that handles massive jewels of protection for surges. Yes, I'm uh, sort of daisy chaining because I don't want to climb under my desk to access the eight outlets on all my UPC. On my, on my battery backup slash surge protector. So instead of climbing under my bench to access those eight outlets every time I need to plug something in or unplug something, I plug one cheap power strip in to the surge protector slash battery backup. And then from there, I access the eight outlets above and easier arms reach for me. Just now, just because I do this th th does not mean I've just extended the amount of outlets I can use. No, I'm not going to fill all these outlets up here on this cheap strip and use all eight outlets on, on my UPC. The only thing plugged into my UPC surge battery backup is one thing, just that. That's it. Because uh, uh, otherwise you're going to overload your battery backup UPC uh, surge protector. And of course, since mine's made from APC, it actually monitors the load. So if I even did overload it, it would start alarming, sending off sounds, alerting, and telling me that I've overloaded it immediately. And, and at that point, I, I would know that I've overloaded it. So, so there's my tip for today. Thanks for watching, guys. And I, I hope you spend the time to, to invest in a good surge protector. If I don't talk to you before the new year, because uh, I know the holidays are coming up fast. Then I'll talk to you after the new year. And until then, I hope you have a, a good, happy and safe holidays. For future videos, don't forget to subscribe if I have a chance. I'm, I'm hoping to get one out. I actually tore these down. and show the difference between fake and real packaging. Hopefully I'll have that done before the holidays. So hit that subscribe button down below. Also hit that notification button so, so you're notified of when I release that video and you know when it comes out. And as always, be safe and keep on tinkering.